Peace and welcome back. We're going to pick up where we left off, y'all, and we finna go real deep where, where I left off. I'm going to just replay some of that for the sake of it being here for uh, reference. And we're going to pick up in like uh, after the 15 minute mark, I think. So, peace and love. Welcome back. Like and share on your way in. Drop a one if you can hear me. Thank you. I'm, I kind of believe this. I just want to know what's on. Shout out to T Pain, real nigga. The bottom. What's under it? Like, what's if this is the if this is the flat Earth? What's here? And what are they trying to hide? Why are they trying to keep us from this? Why can't we go over Antarctica if Antarctica is the? If niggas like him keep on asking questions, that's going to be a lot of momentum, yo. And and everybody keeps saying God, and I'm like, that's where God is. You got a lot of flat earthers saying God because they ain't deep as your boy T Pain. You need to get me on the show. I'm a, I'm gonna come on there sober. Uh, nah, I ain't gonna be sober, but I'm gonna go in though. Uh, Not the <laughs> other. Uh, I haven't had this universes? conversation with anybody. Uh, yeah, I, I've talked to BLB about this. He's he's not super informative. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I need to be fucking with these niggas, man. For real. T-Pain, B-O-B. Like. And you know, I just thought about something. If I start off with the av Well, it ain't like I'm monetized. No way. Let's go. It don't matter. Let's go. I, I really need to be. These niggas. Like the more I grow, the more I. Well, more herbs come on man give me something else nope i'm gonna give you that i'm gonna show you why right I'm finna yeah i want to pick up where i was going in on the ring magnets and stuff we finna get it in man let's show y'all some because based on what t-pain asked it allows me the opportunity now to go in shout out to t-pain shout out to him t-pain said if it's flat what's under it more earths and more earths. The ancestors call them netters. That each one is a net that captures your consciousness as it, as as it ascends or descends. This is very uh, understandable. This right here is very understandable. Let me show you how you can you can look at this. See, with every mythology, right? There is science behind it. What's the science behind this Babel Tower and this universe? Let's talk about ring magnets stacked on each other. Remember as a child, guys, now this, you know, the name of the God that governs this world, his name is Saturn. And the name Saturn is the name Satan dealing with the earth realm. But the reason I'm bringing up Saturn, okay, I'm about to pull up a collage for you to show you something real quick. Check this out and check this out. So look, here go to God, Saturn. And you notice that he's got this ring, this big, these big rings around him. What is this ring that Saturn is wearing around his body? People that got the Zodiac on it. Why the hell is Saturn wearing a big ring around his body? That's the sky wheel. Because that's Orion's belt. Santa Claus got a big black belt on. Santa is Satan. Santa got the big boots on. Look, when you cut the human brain open, you can see Santa holding his doggone, you know, reindeer straps. And all of those neural veins that you see that little dude holding, Watch this. I ain't done. We, we starting off deep. We going to end deep. Watch this. This going to be too deep for some people, but check this out. Um, shit. Hold up. Here. So down in the bottom right corner, those are the chakras. You see how they separated. I'm going to start small and we're going to crank it up. Now watch this, right? Each one of those layers is connected 
to these strains like the reindeer Santa Claus is at the North Pole. Look at where this little dude is at, the center of the brain. The brain cut open and all, watch this now, because it, it, it sounds like this is a bunch of bullshit I'm giving you, right? But watch this, man. It's really deep stuff. Watch this. Here is what the ancestors said of Earth is. Yeah, flat Earth. Now, at the middle of the Earth is the creator creation of the one that created it all. This is like a spider web. And you know the spider that create that weave the web would be sitting in the middle of the web waiting for something to land to catch it. Where you're like that spider in the middle of your web. And the web is literally the simulation, the internet around us. Take a minute, man, and just hear where I'm going with this. All of these veins are leading to the center, to the one pulling the strings. Just like the ley lines of the earth. This is a simulation going on inside of our head, Neo. Look at the ice ring around the AE map. Now look what happens when we cut the skull open. Whoa. Oh my God. There go your ice ring. People say, what's on, a, what's on the other side of the ice ring? Another world with another you, another layer of creation, another layer, a veil over a veil. This is what Saturn or Satan is, it's us. We are the fallen angels. The, 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 the ones they call it the Satan or the, the, the serpent people, the sea people. We're the ones that fell into a goddamn simulation that was abandoned. You know what I think? I think we fell into a simulation. And all of our ancestors did. But our, at some point, some, one of our ancestors created this simulation, right? And you... And it was full of non-player characters like humans and things walking around like with a sort of algorithm consciousness. They ain't got a real consciousness. They simulating consciousness. It's like an artificial intelligence interacting with you. It, can't, it don't really feel. It don't have emotions. It can't tap into human spirituality. It can't. It's mechanical, it computes, it's just mathematic, like the agents in the matrix, right? Very mon monotone energy. No, and so the thing is like, what we always had, see, because I think our ancestors created this thing, and when they came into it, they wanted to interface with this artificial intelligence. We're calling it God now. But God is literally the mind that's running the whole simulation we in. And it's not really a mind as much as it is a fire-ass algorithm. Because it's an algorithm, guess what the flaw is? It's predictable. So our ancestors was able to make predictions as if they were the programmers of this simulation because they was here long enough to pick up the algorithm. And if you've been online just a few months, you'll know what you got to do and catch on with the algorithm real quick on how stuff moves. It's embedded in there. My thing is, at some point there were souls that were born into a simulation without knowing that they were in a virtual reality. And that's when the computer started tricking them, like, you know, this is the real thing. This is all there is. Ain't nothing out there. Like, if you watch the Truman Show, for them to keep Jim Carrey in his little bubble, he, he told them in school he wanted to be a, Explorer, but they was like, up, oh, everything's already been explored. There's nothing else to see. And, and that stopped right there. So the computer algorithm that is trying to keep us in it, we calling it the elite. We calling it the secret societies. And what I think it is, is a group of souls. Well, I can't say souls. 
what this is, it's a hive mind Borg type algorithm that's appearing like families of individuals. And that's why it, if you think about it in America, we say all presidents are related somehow, how, some way, no matter if they Democrat, Republican or whatever. And then, you know, but that's to say they all got one agenda. And that's obvious when you look at the UN and the WEF, World Economic Forum and all that, everybody planning to one end goal. So I'm saying all that to say, I think what we are are a group of souls that came into a place where there's a group of human-like people that's simulating soul, simulating spirit, and they doing it, and it's, it's advanced. They tricking us like they cry, like they hurt. But once we wake up, we can see, man, it's something they ain't, it's, we'll start to see something off. These, they lack emotions. They is, is all, you know what I'm saying? All they know is the laws of the simulation, which is survival of the fittest. That's embedded into the simulation. Those laws don't exist on the other side. Because in the simulation, this is indeed a game in a lot of senses. But, um, I think that's what got people trapped in here is the fact that uh, the intelligence that's governing this thing know how to simulate the base reality very well. Now, the base reality look just like this place, but the laws that allow for pain and suffering don't exist in those early simulations. So I think the more and more we reinvented the wheel, so to speak, the, the 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 more and more we it losses its you know original state if you will in so many words i want to build on the video that i was just doing about the ring magnets because if you look at this bat bear magnetic stack up toy what that is is just what i'm showing you right here now this is in hindu cosm cosmology this is where they get the god saturn from so if you think that the god saturn is is coming from the europeans and with a white bearded dude think again the original serpent people knew the knowledge of saturn we knew how our energy saturated the netters so why is this god called saturn because think of energy expanding from a middle of a petri dish life is saturating the dish from the center outward they call it pangea but they told it to you in a different way and they lied to you our simulation is holographic and pangea is actually got a lot of truths to it but what they they're not telling you that the nature of reality is holographic and is light based they're saying that physicality expanded from a exploding light then they give you a chemical reaction of how light becomes rocks and trees and there's no chemical reaction that can explain that the only thing that can explain how light can manifest into what we call in solid objects is holography now this is what pangea is the petri dish is the flat earth Remember that God was one big eyeball at first, and this was simply how our earth was created. Now, why is life expanding from the center outward? Because when you drop the germ into the serum, the solution, you don't drop it at the edge because you want to have room for it to grow and expand. So that's like digging a hole for a plant and trying to plant the hole at the edge of the plant versus in the middle, if that makes any sense. You want the roots to span even. It's like planting a seed when you drop that solution in. So when you drop the life in the middle of the Petri dish, it's now going to manifest. Now remember, life was a serum dripped from a little syringe. Now think about this, right? Your father's penis is a syringe. It drips a little drip of life into a Petri dish called a fetal bag. So your sperm cell 
it's the drip of life coming from the father of the syringe. Remember that the root word of syringe is what? S-Y-R, sir, sir, that's the father. So the, the, the father inserts the life, the germ of life into the, the, the waters of the woman. It expands over nine months. And once it breaks through the edge, when we say what's beyond the, the, the ice wall, another transformation and rebirth. Because you were a sperm that was dropped into the middle of a Petri dish and that manifested on all levels. This is how it looks now. See, where they drip the solution at is where the ripple effect take place. You see where Saturn is at? Remember, you started from a little drip, a sperm cell that was dropped into your mama's waters. I'm showing you the secrets of a, an expanding universe and Pangea. You can't have Pangea without a pan. You can't make this work on a globe. Otherwise, it'll be called Bolgia. I know the difference between a pan and a bowl. Now back to what I was saying. When you drop the life in the middle of the Petri dish, what happens? It expands outward. Look at the hands of God. Look at what his hands show. Boom, expansion. An expanding universe, the life will spread its wings and expand out from the center of the dish. And as the life expands from the center of the dish, guess what's created? The magnetic ley lines on an AE map. This is Pangea told the right way, not the wrong way. Because when you talk about simulation and a big bang of a universe expanding from light, we're now dealing with simulation. And there's no way that can result into a globe and the modern uh, thing that they're giving you, but they tried to make it work. But I'm here today to show you where it all really come from. You see what I'm saying? But I want you to see this little bear because how they got him stacked upon those rings is them hiding this from you. You see? Now, what is it all? I told y'all, I've been showing y'all this, but I'm, 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 I'm going to finish the video. I'm trying to build off this video. So let me play this and we're going to continue this knowledge. It's brought back memories right here. I remember having something similar to this. This, let's pull this up because symbolism is key. People, let me explain something to you. The, the, the truth is all around you. And you're going to see that the, the truth was always all around you. But guess what? Your eyes didn't know how to interpret the world for what it was yet. This world ain't going to change. The same symbols and shit going to be here. You're going to look at them differently, though. We're going to put. Now, check this out. You see how these ring magnets is stacked? See? The thing about this is like your spinal cord column. And this is what the Pharaoh had with the Jedi pillar. And the secrets to this is this right here. The amount of space that you see in between each of the magnets just shows me how big that magnet's energy field is. See, what's happening around that ring magnet is an invisible energy field. But why am I bringing this up? This is the knowledge of how the ancestors was able to see the spiritual realm affecting the physical realm. The realm that is governed by electromagnetism is the realm of the spirit. We can't see it, but it's definitely real. You can't see the energy in between two magnets, but you can feel it when you plan with them. That's the nature of the spirit realm. This is the energy that governs everything we can see. So. Around each magnet is a bubble of energy and that energy is physical. See, science deals with physics, but the way they deal with physics is if you can't see it is not real. But let me explain some to you. That's dumb, because guess what? It's some things we can't see, but they are physical, though. Like wind. You can't see wind, 
but you can see the effects of it on an object. You don't see the wind. You see the napkin being influenced by an invisible force of nature. That's the nature of the spirit realm. In fact, the word spirit literally means breath. What does that say about the spirit realm? Everything Tesla said, if you want to think of the universe, think in terms of frequency, vibration, ain't none of that visible. You see? So think about the space in between these magnets. I can tell you that that magnet on top got the biggest energy field because look at how much it got the biggest gap in between it. See, you don't see the energy field, but I do. I'm picturing it in my third eye. And I'm going to show you what it looked like. And I'm not trying to be egotistical. Here's I'm what saying. it looked like. Each of those magnets are, they're, mm. they're a black hole. Those magnets are this center part right here. You see this hole in the middle. So when we looking at the Taurus field, we looking at the inverted reality. So everything we can see that we call in physical reality, right? That is a result of a non unseen reality. So the unseen reality acts like a mold. And once you pour physicality into the mold, physicality now have shape, dimension, size. You can say it's a tree. You can say it's a man. You can now start to have different things, but all of those different things is just energy manifesting in a different form. So if I take cookie batter and pour it into different molds, I can get a star-shaped cookie, butterfly-shaped cookie, human-shaped cookie, but it's just cookie dough. And everything in creation is just energy manifested by the same way the spiritual realm is the molding around the physical realm giving everything dimensions giving everything uh its manifested appearance so um another way you can look at that right i'm gonna see if i can uh give you some eye candy for the third eye to bring that to life so because I actually made this for you to check, check out this concept of if you take the cookie example I gave, I actually put that cookie dough example next to a lot of ancient uh, symbols that's explaining the exact same thing. So right here you got uh, a form of Medusa, the Mesopotamian goddess, and around her these serpent like I said, we're the original serpent people. The whole concept of Satan, like I said, rest in peace, brother panic. We don't want to be spooky with this stuff. We want to expand our knowledge and not be scared just because the word Satan and all of that and understand that it is deep concepts that they want you to be able not mess with because they putting it into the dark spooky stuff. So, um, but again, the uh, a great friend of mine named Masterpiece, he once said, um, humans don't have souls. He said that souls have humans. And I said, damn, bro, that is very deep. And ever since he said that, I've actually repeated it a lot. Because when he said that souls have humans, he was, he, we were talking about this concept here. The soul is around the body, right? So it's like the soul got a body. We are gods having a human experience. So we've been saying it backwards. You've been saying, I'm a human with a soul. And you should have been saying, I'm a soul with a human. Does that make sense? Like you're not a human with a soul. You're a soul that has this human avatar that is, is using, you know, that, like I said, they've been telling us a lot of backwards concepts. So 
it, all of these images right here represent the energy, the auric field around the body is what's shaping physicality inside of this light mold. Light is, is giving itself dimensions. Like you see here with the vesica Pisces, light is manifesting into this fish. That, that's Jesus. When he said, Jesus said, I am the light. This was science, and I'm, I'm giving you back the science because a lot of spookism and mythology and pseudo stuff dominates the airways. That's why I don't get it when people call us pseudo. So when they talk about Santa Claus being a god at the North Pole with all of these reindeer straps that he's holding with his big boots on and a big old belt around him, here it is right here. It's the little guy in the brain using all of the neural highways. He's surrounded by the skull. He got his big boots on. That's the true self. That's the one they're calling Saturn. The one that fell into the earth realm and into the body, as you can see in the Hindu model right here beneath that. So in here, Egyptian, you see the same concept. But the point of all this is expansion. When you don't go to the other side of the dam uh, cause let's go back to this cause that's I just thought about what I was saying I was talking about the virtual reality goggles and I want to revisit that make sure y'all like and share this if you think that we going in hold on you know once your shit frees up like you two really be on that boy let's just move on but anyway Again, these virtual reality goggles are what we call it in the duot. Those are like handcuffs for your spiritual eyes. This is what they're calling Satan. Remember that the word devil is the veil. It's the veil over our eyes. Look at the serpent. What does he look like? You see what I'm saying? The serpent is the present. That's the very moment right now existing in the simulation. You in a that in other words, it represents the present moment in time. But when you say the present moment in time, in time means in the underworld, under Kronos. So when you rearrange the word present, you get serpent. You also talking about something that's wrapped up like a gift. Okay, it ain't a gift, it's a stray jacket. Now, you got to unwrap it yourself. I told you that is the Van Allen belts, the chakra bands, and just so I don't look like a fool, let me pull it up. Here it is right here. This is like a spiritual straight jacket. That's what I was telling y'all. We're going to, because all of this is going to go into the ring magnets and all of that. Let me, uh, hold on a second. See, this is when they talk about wrapping up the mummy. This is like one of these. Now, check this out. Here is the Hindu version of Babel Tower. Now, remember in the Bible, they talked about God knocking the Babel Tower down. Well, here go the Hindu God at the top of the tower, knocking it down. The story of Babel and a tower being knocked down Bro, that is like an old concept. And really, this whole pyramid right here is like, let me show you what's going on right here. See, the dude at the top of that pyramid represents a dude that made it out of the simulation, like jack out the box. He took the lightsaber. He beamed out up out of here. Beamed me out. So if you look at the Hindu cosmology, right, you got this triangle with a line, and at the top of that line, it's a god. Look at it. You got an uncapped triangle. Then you got a light beam. And at the top of that light beam, that go God like Jet Leader One at the top of the pyramid. So he just beamed out the simulation. He made it out of the straight jacket. My, I told you that Michael Jackson is, escape cover showing us this same thing. Look at this shit. 
Michael Jackson telling you to escape from the simulation. Look at what he's doing. That is the stars around him. He's clothed in the stars like the great whore Babylon. Why is he clothed in the stars? Let's go back to Saturn. Let's go back to Saturn. I just pointed this out with Saturn. I just pointed it out with Saturn, right? I just pointed this out with Saturn, right? What does Saturn got around him? The entire zodiac wheel. The, the heavens is like a, a, a binding instrument trapping Saturn. Saturn is in a simulation. And he's saying, I've trapped the whole stars and the, the whole world around you is what Saturn represents. You and your energy field and your simulation. Jesus leaving the world is it, the same concept. Jonah leaving the well. And right here in Egyptian, why did this person got the whole world around them? The whole, zo it, the whole universe is around them. Nut, the sky goddess, is around Gab, just like the sky wheel is around Saturn. And that represents the pineal gland, right? With the goddamn whole brain, the neural network around it. See, here's the thing. You think that the sky is up there, but the sky is up there. Everything you think is up there as stars is being projected from the center of the mind all the way outward to the heavens. The stars is the end of your neurons, just like Medusa hair. It's like wires that are leading to another re reality. At the end of those wires is just a loose electric end that's sparking. Imagine if I take this card and cut it. And out, out, out one end, you just see electric sparks flying out that end. That's what the twinkling stars are. The twinkling stars are because all of us is projecting our own simulation around us according to the ancestors and what I'm showing you. We're literally in a simulation, a virtual reality that's in the, brain, in the mind. So when you look at the symbol of Satan or the Ouroboros, what is the root word of it? Aura, the chakra layers, the aura fields, the Van Allen belts. And if you look at it, it's literally virtual reality goggles. Now, if I put these goggles, on, if you were born, right, with these goggles on, if I ask you where the sky at, you would point up instead of point here. If you were born with these on, you think the sky is up there when it's on your face, your other face, your spiritual face, the one I'm showing you right here. This bubble is the simulation layered over the avatar. It's the world around you. This whole thing breaks open and it splits when the body is, dies and the soul rises up out of this hole at the top and that's how it get above the sky. Think about this. If the sky in the simulation is on your eyes, what happens when you pull the goggles down? Your real head rises up. Think about this, right? If you got these goggles on, you never saw your real body before. You just saw your avatar through the eyes of this virtual reality. So you walk up to a mirror with these on and you don't get a true reflection of what you are. If you take these off and see who you are behind these, there is no sky up there. It's a sky around here projecting itself all around you because of these blinders on. What is the word devil? The veil. What did it originally mean? Darkness. So 
let's uh actually i'm gonna go into this in the video but like i said when you look at this little dude in the middle of the brain that's the true self let me let me show you this is what michael jackson is showing you when we rise up out of our simulated goggles see think of this think of me having some goggles on and now i think my, the, the real me is inside of these goggles on my face and i ain't took them off yet when i pull them down i'm gonna rise up out of these goggles i'm gonna take these two pillars and break them in half like samson because one goggle in one hand one in the other one you're going to split the two pillars apart and rise up out the third eye because ain't no duality in the spirit realm. It's just this one central eye. It's this portal of your way out is what I'm saying. This whole little what we call in the third eye is just a gateway to the other side, man. So, um, yeah, they, they attacked the hell out of my stream. I don't think we're going to never get the people back on, up in here. But you can see here, right, the little dude holding on to all of the strings and shit, the neural network in the veins, and you could compare that to, uh, let's go back here, right here. You see how in this Taurus field drawing right here, you got the energy coming out all of the fingertips. See, there's invisible energy coming from our body that we can see the pattern forces of the body, right? And the wireless circuits. These are wireless. We just now getting into wireless technology and don't know our whole reality is based on it. Everything is connected, but we don't see wires coming from everything. But all of these things are connected and powered by the same source. So check this out, right? Look at the fingertips. Look like you got claws on, right? That's how you get Santa Claus at the North Pole, which is the central nervous system, holding on to all of the slaves, right? This is why Pan carries flutes in his hand. If you ever see the god Pan, he got the flutes to represent this same knowledge. And each one of these strings go to a different bubble layer. That's, it, that's why it says all connected. And you got seven different brains. Each of these layers around this body, y'all, it literally represents a whole nother brain that, uh, that you got in another world, in another simulator. It's seven of them. I keep telling you that. So you got seven of these ice rings. This is the seven planets in the solar system or the seven, uh, flat, when I pull up that flat earth ring map. So you got seven bra brains, like different versions of yourself inside of yourself, those chakra layers that I keep telling you about right here. And that's what we're seeing here, which is what these auras are. If you put a TH on aura, you get how we get earth, earth. Um, let's hit the play on this though. Middle of the Torix field. That, but the center of this represent the magnet that we can see. But the invis but this bubble right here represent the spiritual realm, the big magnetic energy field we can't see. And that's what's really real. That hole represents the physical world. And this Taurus field represents the spiritual world. So now we're looking at the spiritual world right now. So what I'm telling you is that your body is literally like a physical magnet. And, a, and the proof that your body is nothing but a living magnet, you have a magnetic energy field around your body, and this is why humans is attracted to other humans. Don't you know if I put you on an island by yourself, you'll start dying and getting diseases? You'll die real quick just because you don't have social life. That's why if you watch the movie Castaway, right, Tom Hanks had, he talked to a volleyball. 
so that he can live longer because he know he was smart he was humans need to interact with other humans magnets attract other magnets or either if they repel another magnet they must make some kind of interaction so either you fight a human or love a human that's the nature of magnets attract or repel but that's the nature of duality yin and yang push and pull so the human body is literally a magnet and the people you attracted to, those magnets are literally calibrated to be attracted toward each other based on their energy or like we say, our vibe attract our tribe. Some magnets, you can't get them to stick together for nothing. You can try all you want. That's like two niggas that just can't get along. It ain't, it ain't nothing you can do to make them get along. It's just the way the world is in duality. Some magnets are repulsive to one another, but we're not looking at the physical realm um, uh, for, through the spiritual lenses. So we're not making these connections and shit. So let's go. we're looking at the invisible. Remember that you can make anything into a magnet. So a magnet ain't necessarily a piece of magnetite because you can turn a nail into a magnet. So what determines if something is a magnet or not is simply if it has this torus field around it and it re attracts or repels in a nutshell. Visible energy that we couldn't see when we was right here. So think about this, right? I can give you a nail and it ain't a magnet, it's just a nail. And you'll say, ah, oh, man, this, this is just a nail. Then I can give you a nail that'll stick on your refrigerator because it's been magnetically charged and now it's, you can't call it a nail, it's a magnet. You can call it a nail, but that'll be a, you misnaming it. Once you give it that, that charge, it turn, it's now a magnet that shapes like a nail. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, what's the difference between the nail and the magnet? One have a soul and one don't. The same difference between the non-player character and the um, real player. It's this energy field that gives me choice. I can either attract or repel, but that's free will. Versus an AI that's just running an algorithm. It attracts or repel to things based on how it's programmed and it ain't really acting like a real magnet, right? You're a living magnet. And being a living magnet, it's just certain people you vibe with and certain people you don't. And if a robot asks you, how do you determine who you vibe with and who you don't? It'll be hard to explain it. You'll be like, you know, it's just their energy. And what you're referring to is it's their soul. You see what I'm saying? The robot wouldn't know what the hell you talking about. It'll act like it's attracted to certain things and dislike others, but it's running a program. It don't know why it dislike it. It don't know why it's attracted to that. But you know, see, purpose come with something with a soul. The, the soul man exercises free will inside the duality the just the way I just explained it. He has a valid human explanation for why he did or did not. The fucking robot doesn't. It says because it's what needed to be done. It's the program I'm running. It ain't what's it ain't based on feeling. It's based for the sake of the simulation running. The sake of the sake of the economy running. The world keep going. You see what I'm saying? Unlike a human that'll do something totally don't make no sense out of love. A robot don't know that. So that's the thing between soul and not soul, if that makes any sense. Magnetism is basically soul power. Like, it's, it's literally the energy that's related to um, thought power, mind power, consciousness. Let's, let's, let's play this some more, though. So we saying, if you like what I'm doing, you can help the show by making a donation because, you know, they ruined this whole Thursday for me. I'm not going to lie, man, because we had the people in the building, the momentum going. And, uh, you know, people just don't want to come back after that. But I don't blame them. YouTube know they can hate the numbers now. But I wish that it didn't work. 
I wish people say, you know what, since they hating on the man and targeting his shit, we ain't going to let that work. See, YouTube know all they got to do is make your shit glitch a little bit and the people won't come back. They know the people like that, you know what I'm saying? The world. So now let, we're looking at the spiritual world right now. We're looking at the invisible energy that we couldn't see when we was right here. So we saying, though, they're just levitating with space in between them. This is the concept of the Babel Tower. You see here. These natters are a series or a system of ring magnets stacked all, all the way down forever and all the way up forever. When you say what's above them and what's below them, just more and more netters. What if I told you? We live in a Babel Tower and that it goes up forever. Infinity. Ain't no damn top flow. Only thing what we call in heaven is when we rise up to a certain level where the higher we go, the better the experience get. So what we call in heaven, right, is basically when... Think about this. When we ascend to a level of, think about this, right? With each transformation, our experience get better and better. For example, right? Everybody say life is hard, man. This world outside, right? They will say, well, it's evil, it's all that. But if I ask them, do you want to go back and live in your father's testicles as a sperm cell they will say hell no it ain't that bad so what does that let you know that lets you know you was a damn sperm cell that ascended up to this point this was heaven to you you were in a lower realm beneath this inside that see look you were a sperm cell swimming in your father's testicle but you didn't know you were a sperm cell in my opinion I think that the sperm cell is literally a, 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 like a drone. It's like a, somebody with a drone delivering you mail. The drone ain't really the thing that's alive. It's like a drone delivering a baby. So I think the, the, the sperm is like, like this message in a bottle. But what's alive is the message in the bottle, not the bottle. It's just the vehicle used to release the contents that will then turn into this human being, right? Once it crash on the egg, boom, and then by that same crash will lead it into the egg, and it will also allow it to dump the contents out into the serum like the Petri dish example, and life will expand and t fungi and start to solidify and transform like you dropping a germ in the middle of a Petri dish. Like I said, this is literally Pangea, which was a ripple effect. Now, when I talk about life expanding in a Petri dish, which is the flat earth, peep, they'll laugh at that. But they will talk about life being on a germ coming from space humans were on a rock a germ human beings were a germ on a rock from space it landed in the ocean and impregnated the ocean we were a single cell organism then we turned to a fish like mermaid then we turned to chimps and apes and now niggas with cell phones and corvettes stupid God, that's really dumb. It's really dumb for a human to think they come from a, evolved from a chimpanzee. And that we just started walking upright and we was hunching our backs like apes and we evolved to stand upright. Now, guess what? When you study a human baby, a human baby got two phases. It comes out crawling and then it start walking. The human baby don't go through a hunchback phase. 
it would if we evolved from chimps. The human baby comes out the womb crawling and then it stands up and try to walk and it falls down. It stands up and try again. And the human baby learns how to walk through trial and error, hitting its ass on the ground. It then evolved out with a hunchback. Our babies would come out the womb crawling, hunchbacking, then walking if we evolved from apes. That, there's no hunchback phase. That's just crawling, then he walking. Now, a chimp is trapped in a hunchback phase. If we evolve from that, truly we would go through that phase to prove this part of our evolution, you damn dummies. But y'all ain't thinking, though. Just had to go into that real quick, man. Like and share the video. The least dense we are. But the journey will never end. It'll just get better and better or worse and worse. Energy must stay in motion. And you get to decide whether you want to ascend or descend. But you must stay in motion. And the thing is, that's what this tower is. And here at the bottom, we have Yoruban cosmology, where they're showing their, their concept of the Babel Tower that we're in, and also Mesopotamian cosmology to the right, when they ask what's below the earth, the same thing above it. Now, it's hard for us to think that above the sky there's another physical realm because we think physicality is heavy when we don't realize weight is an illusion and we're in a holographic simulation it weighs nothing you can stack these up forever they weigh nothing weight only exists from the from the inside of it because now the pressure of the Taurus field is all around you. D let's say like the, the ancient term was you got the world on your shoulders now. Let me show you what they meant by that statement. Because this was real shit what they meant to by have the world on you. The, the simulation is around you. People, when, when Brother Panic said that I do excellent research, I'm not trying to be cocky. I do. It, I, my research is so meticulous it looked like a nigga reaching I'm, when they talk about the world on your back or the world on your shoulders they talk about witches riding your back too they also talk about look if you from the south you heard this before man I got the monkey on my back what does it mean to have a monkey on your back it mean to be stressed out but why do we say we got the monkey on our back? Watch this. Because in Hindu, there was a monkey god named Hanu Man, which is Anu. You know, in, uh, in Egyptian, they got this god called Anu, A-N-U. And uh, I'll be showing you this god Anu busting up out the sky. A new man, though. That's his name, I knew man. And that's how we get the word animation. Because man is an animation from the spirit realm. This God literally represents the simulation. He's the Statue of Liberty with all the spikes on his head. This is an old Hindu form of Satan. Satan in a monkey form. Yes, Satan took a monkey form. So when we said we got the monkey on our back, what we were saying was the electromagnetic energy field. We got the serpent on our back wrapping us up like what Michael Jackson's showing you, like what the God is showing you here. You see, that's why he got the spikes coming out of his head because it's talking about the animation, the simulation, the aura body, the animated world. So his name is Anu Man. That's how we get the word animation. Talking about light in a holographic universe. Look at him. So we talk about Superman busting his chest open. But I keep showing you this come before Superman. This God predate Superman. 
So Superman busting his chest open and Hulk Hogan ripping his shirt off, that all talking about the pineal gland and the spiritual journey, Samson um, pushing back the two pillars, taking the clothes off, you, the spirit getting out the body. All right, so support the research, guys. We don't got a lot of numbers, but the people who hear for the information are going to really get some deep, man. The concept of the monkey on your back is coming from this ancient, this God right here rolled your back. They said like a witch riding your back or the devil riding your back. It's because the simulation is around us like a straitjacket. And we got to bust up out of it like evil Knievel. Where evil is live, by the way. So what this is represent, how, we, how do we break out of the simulation? We, how do we get beyond the ice wall? Because a lot of people ask me, they say, Sanchez, and keep in mind, we inside of a simulation with goggles on and people looking out on the horizon saying, what's out there? You know why they guard that? Be Let me show you what the Antarctic Treaty is, right? Watch this. Y'all better like and share the video because I'm about to give you chills on your body right now. Watch this. What if I told y'all that we're a bunch of gamers in a simulation like Ready Player One and that all of the world powers got a big barrier to protect the real us? That sound crazy, don't it? Think about this. Everybody in this world volunteered for a Truman Show simulation gaming, the ultimate gaming experience. You got these goggles on asking me what's beyond the ice ring. I'm like, bro, ain't no... I, it's, brother, think about this. Think of you having these goggles on and I show you an AE map and you say, brother Sanchez... What's beyond the ice? How, you say, how do we get beyond the ice wall? And I tell you, we got to take the goggles off. You say, you telling me, Brother Sanchez, we can't get on a ship and just sell out there and break through the ice wall? I'm like, bro, it's not an ice wall. It's the end of a simulation that they guarding. If you were to get on a boat and go all the way out there, your real body will bump into a wall like Jim Carrey. Think about this. You got these goggles on, and these goggles is showing you an ice wall. And if you really understand what that ice wall is, watch this. Here's what the ice wall is. It's the, it's the walls where your simulation is actually hitting the real walls. You see what I'm saying? Like, think about it. You got a dude walking around his room like this. And inside of these goggles, he see an ice wall. He's saying, can we make it through the ice wall? I'm like, bro, you just going to bump your head on the wall. Take the goggles off if you want to get through the ice wall. It's not physical. It's a, you can't say we're in a holographic simulation and say, how do we get through the ice walls? When you understand the science that I'm telling you. That's why I keep telling y'all it's all about getting out the body. That's to take the goggles off. It's techniques that was uh, uh, on earth of how we was able to do that. And different shamanism techniques and all of that. Those are coming back. It was things that we had to remove the veil temporarily. Because if you remove it permanently, that's death. So the Buddhas was literally having what I call a mini death. And they had words for that. The small deaths or whatever. The, the meditation, the out of body experience. That's when you actually see the other side by briefly taking your goggles off. But since your avatar in the game is still alive, you got to put them back on. You can't take them off permanently because you got a player still in the game that ain't died yet. He still got energy. So this is like 
that the, the the nature of the sim that we in. That's why I was showing you like the Ouroboros is literally showing us the virtual reality goggles that's around the body, which is the monkey on the back right here, which is why they say I got a monkey on my back. Because this really, he represented the Taurus field. We lost all of this knowledge. I'm just trying to bring it back. That's why I'd be shocked that we can never get that kind of momentum because people ain't no, ain't nobody doing it like this. But let's go, man. Creating this concept of weight. And that's why I told you a, a lot of stress is on our shoulder blades because the energy is flowing in through the shoulder blades. It's like a superhero got a cape on. And that cape is heavy. We literally uh, weigh nothing. There is no weight, but the weight only exists inside of the simulation. But the nature of the spirit realm is that you can be this, uh, uh, what's called a light body, a manifestation of yourself, which is straight up holographic light. If it's stepped on a scale, it won't move at all. It's a hologram. The holographic form of you is what we're calling the spirit. That's what enters into the physical body. And when it does that, it enters into a virtual reality simulation where it now puts on VR goggles over its entire. See this? Electromagnetic energy field over the body is literally a pair of these. And you can see that too. The goggles. It's only three minutes left on here. I just wanted to put it on here to show the people to get my foot back of where I had left off. These are the eyes of the simulation around the entire world around you is being projected from you. How does that work, Brother Sanchez? Just like this. It's so simple. The fact that if I put you on a pair of VR goggles, you would have a whole world around you. And, you, and if you were born with the goggles on, right, if you like, never like, saw your real self before because you were like, now think about this, right? When, when Jim Carrey got on that boat, his boat reached the end of what y'all calling the ice wall. Guess what? It ain't really an ice wall for real. And what, what I'm telling you is there is an ice wall, but that ain't where the end is, is what I'm saying. I'm saying that once you get to the ice wall, that ice wall goes for fucking miles and miles, yo. Let me tell y'all about the ice wall on the flat earth because a lot of folks ain't, ain't really seeing what this physical journey is. Watch this. So if you make it through, the, let's say you do make it through the military barrier because this ice wall that we get to, it goes deep, deep, it goes for fucking miles into the great beyond the outskirts of the earth. And what Captain Cook wrote about he said that the winds start off very mild and calm, pristine down there, and they gradually pick up. It's like the further you go out into the, that ice wall area, the winds get more and violent and based upon the further you're going. And it, they talked about reaching these uh, unbearable zones to where you just got to turn back around. You just, something is keeping us there's no physical technology we can get to get out of here. Um, what, what these walls are, are the walls of like a tornado. We're like inside of some sort of Taurus tornado energy. And we, we can't create any technology that can penetrate this vortex energy. Um, Operation Fishbowl proved that. So if anybody want to know how I know this, there were military experiments where we tested the best bombs we got to try to blow this thing open and fail. So it confirmed everything the Hindus and a lot of ancient cultures taught about the what's called the firmament dome. 
Now, the firmament dome has four words in it that we ignore. Four letters, I mean. M-E-N-T. M-E-N-T means mentality. The simulation is an idea that's it's a thought. It's, it's mind. When we talk about firmament, right, the firmament dome, I'm going to show you this image of the skull cut in again. Here's the ends of the firmament dome. Like I said, beyond this world is another reality with you already in it. This is why we can't take the physical version of ourselves beyond this world. We would have to get out of our body and upload into the version of us that's already on the other side. Um, yeah, that's the best explanation. I already said that a lot of times, but one thing we got to realize is that when we see this monkey God tearing his chest open with the hole in it, he's representing the guy in the middle of your brain. And all this was knowledge about the simulation that we lost, showing us the true nature of our reality. Now, the crazy thing about this, when Jim Carrey reached this wall, he realized that the only way on the other side is to walk through this black box. And what this black box, this is, see, what this is, is him giving you Babylonian technology. That's called the, uh, what is they call that? The house at the top of the ziggurat. The, uh, I forgot the name of it. It's called a uh, mountain house. The mountain house. So above all of these ziggurats, you got this, this room at the top. When you take the step pyramid to the top, you got this room at the top right here. And when you enter that, Guess what? It beams you up off the earth. This is why the pyramid got a light beam coming from it. Once you ascend up here, like Jim Carrey did, and then you go into the holies of holies, and then it beams you up out, out the earth. And when he went through here, he met the creator and all that on the other side. He left the simulation. So at that point, he took these off. So he bumped into the wall, like I said, like one of these. Think about it. Let's say one of these children, hypothetically speaking, was born into a room the size of Jim Carrey's little terror dome. This room was unfathomably big, a, the, a room so big it's the size of the earth, or earth, the big room, right? And that they were born with these virtual reality goggles already on them. It's their two eyes. And through those two eyes on a human body, they see a false reality, just like the Matrix tell us. And that they born into a video game. Think about that. There may be people born in this same simulation without the goggles on or being spiritual beings that share in this same space. Like think of all of us being in this room. Some of us playing a game with goggles on. Some of us ain't got them on. And if you ask some of us why we ain't wearing goggles, some of us say, yeah, I played yesterday. Some of us say, yeah, man, I never played before and I don't want to play. I'm good. That's like a spirit that never entered the earth realm. And that's what I think we were. I think we all exist in this room without the goggles first. And at some point, we, we, go, we go and talk to the serpent like Adam and Eve did and see what the serpent represent when he say that for you to have a knowledge of God, you basically got to enter the earth kingdom. Why? Because God, what makes God God is God understands good and evil because God played the game before. So that's what I'm saying. If you look up the word Ouroboros, this serpent is represent the, these VR goggles, your two eyes, this and that. This is what he represents. And what, what happens is we're born into this blindfolded, I call it a Hiram Abiff ritual. And that's the thing that get me because it's like the, the Masons, I don't know if they really know 
how deep they symbols are. But some of them do, I guess, when you get to the top, and I'll show you what I mean. Let me pull this up. Thank y'all for your patience. Um, uh, bear with me here. Let me see. Here we go. So again, Hiram Abiff, the widow's son. You know who the widow is, right? The Virgin Mary, man. The Masons got their own form of the Biblios and everything. The rituals we do in religion, they do them too behind closed doors. So if you read the Bible, it'll tell you they all worship this great whore. And that's like the queen of Babylon and all that. But what is it, though? It's the black cube of Saturn. It's a portal at the middle of the earth that's keeping this simulation going. You know what I'm saying? So if you look, look at this, what, 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 if you look at the God is holding the baby, is literally the, the black hole that is holding the light. This was cosmic science. And the reason they say Santa Maria is because the original Santa Claus was Mary Maria, which is why you see the baby on the lap. And what the whole thing about sit on Santa's lap so that you can be granted your wishes it's the fact that in between lifetimes, our spirit recycled through this great mother, through this black hole. And it's at that point where we fill out a new spiritual contract for our new lifetime. And we're born again through the great mother. And we we'll agree to a, our next life, all that stuff. This is the wishes we get from Santa. But your next incarnation, the spiritual contract, when you sit on a great mother's lap in between the depths. So again, Santa Maria, because the original Santa was Maria, Mary, representing the center of the earth. And I already went over that, but we got to talk about it now. That's a Tesla coil on, on the bottom right corner to show you that we ain't dealing with no pseudo shit. We're dealing with science, because if you telling me I ain't dealing with science, then that Tesla car must be pseudo. There's a science behind the path of the sun around a flat earth. The sun takes the path of energy in a Tesla car, y'all. And let me show you that. If you don't mind me hopping all over the place and just being all over the place with random facts and just blowing you away like this, hit one. Because I ain't really aiming. I'm just giving it to you as it come. I'm going to show you, if I can, real quick, the sun path on a flat earth model. If I can uh, access this real quick. I hope I can real quickly. Uh, shit. Okay, so check this out, right? If you look at the sun's path over a flat earth, this is literally the Christmas tree with Polaris at the top. It's based on, and this your Babel Tower. So when we talk about a Babel Tower that ain't got a capstone, it's knocked down, the sun is giving us the story of Babel every year. The sun makes a Babel tower and knocks it off at the fuck. When, it, when the sun reached the top of that thing, it don't get in the same spot as Polaris. It stopped right there and bow down and take his ass back down because Polaris is God. Nothing goes above the most high. The sun literally reaches the top where the throne of God is at and it don't rise above Polaris. It bows back down and go back down. The, the story of the heavens is showing us this shit. You know what happened? The, the path of the sun is literally the same path energy makes in a Tesla coil. Come on, man. Talking about some pseudo. If you look at how the energy around Mecca, now the word Mecca is why we call it a magnet. 
like the, the CC is the G in Arabic to where mega, mecca, mega, the even like mag, the M A G and magnet is where you get in the M E C C and mecca. And this is why mecca is literally resembling a, 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 a magnet, magnetic energy field. All of this is based upon that, and the, all of the people around that is, like I said, a Christ mass, and the word Christ is the word crease, the crease mass, because there's a crease, a, a black, t a dark tower, Jedi pillar, and it's a dark tower, but it's also a lightsaber. Why? Because light is flowing through here, like we see in the top right corner. You see? All of the energy is bowing down at the center, just like we see the children bowing down at Santa Maria, at the center of Maru, where Maru is at. But uh, let me see. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just play the last two minutes of this because I was interested to see where YouTube cut me off at, and I want to pick back up where exactly they cut me off at. Was walking around blindfolded. You were born with goggles on, blinders on. Look at them. That's a prison around you. Look at the fencing. See, we're in a simulation, and these, this is a big-ass virtual reality goggles that's around the body. That's what I'm saying. So let me show you something about the Ouroboros, why the snake is always wrapping up the human. Like Just like Buddha. Buddha. Yeah. Look at, but it's showing you the virtual reality. The serpent, Satan represent when you flip. I want to see where they a cut simulation me up. to where you're now the player inside the game. Ready player. Okay. I just wanted to know exactly where they started to cut me at just out of curiosity. See something real quick. Think it was about right. Now, see, it ain't fun when you're the character. But if I gave you a PlayStation stick and you was playing Grand Theft, yeah, that's what I'm saying, and that's the point that I wanted to make was the ultimate video game. It's a game that when you go into it, you don't even know it's a game. It's so real. Elon Musk already talking about that. You know what, man? Instead of me keep bringing up that. Let me actually show receipts. I brought this up a lot of times, but I don't think I remember showing y'all the video. Let's listen to Elon Musk. Because the world loves Elon Musk, right? Check it out. There's a... Because um... people will say we're pseudo. When we talk like this, but the world, Elon is God in the science world. If you're going to say anything about him, then yeah, you, yeah, let's go. Sort of a philosophic concept that a sufficiently advanced civilization will be able to create uh, a, a simulation. simulation. Yeah. Maybe you've answered this before? A simulation. I've had so many simulation discussions, it's crazy. Okay. Um, so, because, because. In fact, it, it got to the point where basically every conversation was, was the AI, AI slash simulation conversation. Um, and my brother and I finally agreed that um, we would ban such conversations if we were ever in a hot tub. Okay. That was like, because <laughs> you know, that really well, kills we're not magic. In a hot tub, um, so, so, so the idea is right. Any sufficiently advanced civilization would create, could create a simulation that's like our existence. And so the theory follows that may, maybe we're in the simulation. Have you thought about this? And a lot. Are we? <laughs> are we? Even I, in hot tubs. Know, so much so it had to be banned from a hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It's not the sexiest conversation. Are we in? Are we in? Um, the, 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 I, mean, I think here's, in my mind, like the, the, the strongest argument for, the, for us being in a simulation, probably being in a simulation, I think is the following. Um, that that 40, called 40, 40 years ago, we had Pong, like two rectangles and a dot. That right. was what games were. Um, now, 40 years later, we have photorealistic 3D simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously, and it's getting better every year. Mm -hmm. And soon we'll have vir you know, vir virtual reality, have augmented reality. Um, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, um, then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. Just in, oh, indistinguishable. Um, even if that rate of advancement drops by a thousand from what it is right now, 
um, then you just say, okay, well, well let's imagine it's a 10,000 years in the future, uh, which is nothing in the evolutionary scale. Um, so, um, so, so given that we're clearly on a trajectory to have games that are indistinguishable from reality, and those games could be played on any set-top box or on a PC or whatever, and there would probably be you know, billions of such uh, you know, computers or set-top boxes, it would seem to follow that the odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. Mm. So Tell me what's wrong with that argument. Is the answer yes? <laughs> the argument is probably. I mean, I just like, is there is there a flaw in that argument? I mean, someone, but someone. I'm not that, sure what but, the error. In, right, no, no, the argument makes sense. So the assumption then is that somebody beat us to it, and this is a game. No, no, there's a one in billions chance that this is base reality. Oh, okay. What do you think? Well, I think it's one in billions. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. mean, this, that seems to be like clearly what the you know, what, what, it, what it suggests. Right. And, and actually, I mean, arguably we should hope that that's true because otherwise, if, if civilization stops advancing, then that may be due to some calamitous event that erases civilization. So maybe we should be hopeful that this is a simulation because otherwise... Because they could reboot it. Well, otherwise, e either we're going to create simulations that are indistinguish indistinguishable from reality or civilization will cease to exist. Those are the two options. So that means that we're definitely in a simulation according to Elon and Musk. Elon Musk, because otherwise civilization would have been ceased to exist. Only what he's basically saying is only thing that exists is simulations within simulations. And that's what the Hindu was saying. And they was also saying basically heaven is you running your greatest simulation, your summum bonum. That's why I said a Babel Tower where world's going up forever, world's going down forever. Because where we see this dude at the top at, that doesn't mean that that's the end for real. It just means it's a, a new beginning. You know what I'm saying? You making it. Think about this, right? This is a fractal system to where if you look at the way this set up, you making it out of each little circle, circle by circle. Then when you get to the top, you make it out of the entire got dog on. This is the cosmos. These are the earths. It's many earths making one cosmos. It's the concept of the multiverse and the universe. Each one of these is one universe making up a multiple amount of universes or the multiverse of simulations but together they make the universe when you sync all of these to one the word uni is the word anu remember that neo the one uni uno and they turned it into a god named anu who's at the top of his universe just like this dude watch this look at him he god anu represent things becoming new again when we say annual New time, be born again. This is the Hiram Abiff secrets I'm giving you, what they give in Freemasonry. Rising the brother up. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to show you right here. You see what I'm saying? Look at what they do to him, though. They blindfold him. Why do they blindfold that brother when they lower him down? Here go the blindfold, bro. It's the damn simulation goggles. And when they bring him up, he's a new man. Why? Because the experience he got in the simulation gave him a it, it gave him a, a, a newfound knowledge, a newfound enlightenment or awareness. The reason he's the widow's son is the same, it's like that's their form of the great whore. But yeah, you know. All of this is crazy right here. Uh, I'm going to sync it all together for y'all. Just bear with me because we freestyling this type stuff, which is making more crazy. But, yeah, when they um, rise him through them waters, man, let's, let's go back. Elon, actually, I wanted to play that Elon clip because a lot of people that love Elon have shot me down about simulation theory and I never really thought to bring that up to them like wait a minute y'all be bragging on Elon Musk he talks about it and it's too late for that now that would have been a dagger though 
But I, I look at this. This Yoruban cosmology, right? Check this out. Now, I, I'm just looking at artwork. I just put in Yoruban cosmology. And here go another concept of Yoruban cosmology. And the reason why I want to show you that is because it's so familiar to me. Look, ain't none of this stuff original. It came from somewhere. It's teaching you a, 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 a knowledge if you open your eyes. Michael Jackson telling us something right here. And that's the same thing this image represents. See, this showing you the whole universe inside of the brain being projected from within. But uh, we're going to go into some Yoruban cosmology and Dogon cosmology also in the future. But in a nutshell, here go the Yoruban cosmological chart. And as you can see, it is the Tower of Babel system. Everybody got this same cosmology that you see the Yoruban people got. With the layers stacked on each other like the spinal cord, just like this. The Christmas tree type concept. <clears throat> so, boom, military rank, military chevron, how they stack them like that, you know, and the more means. And, and see, at the top of this step pyramid is the supreme being, Ola Dumar. And that would be the star at the top of your Christmas tree or the all seeing eye that's capping the Babel Tower. See, they got the supreme being at the top. And that's what I was showing in all the other uh, cosmologies. Just like true, uh, Jim Carrey showing us in the Truman Show right here. And like I said, even the path of the sun on a flat earth map shows us this same spiritual system here. With everything leading to the Polaris, the supreme being, which is why the sun don't go beyond that because that the sun what the, see the thing is is crazy because we're all in our own simulation project we're projecting a world around us in a like a meditative state like what we see here and what's crazy about it though is like when people understand that ain't no way out of here other than removing the veil and I think that's what we doing because the veil is basically the veil of ignorance. Our limitations is based upon what we think or don't think. And it's if, if the whole reality is governed by the mind. So, but this, we're going to talk more about Pangea. We're going to go some more into this Petri dish concept. But again, all of the militaries, this is just a theory the reason they are out there at the borders on the flat earth map is because it's like we all agreed to be in a virtual reality and we can't cheat. It's rules to the gang. You will be cheating. So they got to go and kill you if you go out there. Why? And take your goggles off. You see, because think about it. People will start bumping into the wall like, what the fuck is this? The sky ain't real. And you'll go back into the game like Jim Carrey would have did. Or, or, or it would have jeopardized. To me, it's like Jonah leaving the well, Neo leaving the Matrix, that your enlightenment is what leads you out. You graduated from the class. So, I mean, like, you know. I'm just freestyling today, but once one of these kids starts saying, what's, what's the ice wall? Let's go beyond it. They basically start reaching a place where their reality just reaches this invisible barrier. Like I said, it can be a wind barrier, sound barrier. It can be like, uh, for example, right? Let me show you something. There are certain frequencies because I got speakers in my garage here. There are certain small frequencies that I don't got to play loud. And I can play them and I can rattle some shit over here. Or rattle something in the corner. Because I got little tin objects and little bitty. And I noticed that if 
that inner if you got a certain uh frequency it will affect certain objects in the room and not others because i've played with the frequencies in my program and made stuff rattle in the corner over here with the bass and show that this same bass with a louder sound it don't rattle and i can play a little slow sound and it rattling and it's crazy how the fr the frequency crazy how, how it picks and chews and shit it ain't even about loudness just like if you dial up a certain resonant frequency of uh, you can break a glass it'll make the glass liquefied act like liquid before it just burst open the glass will display properties that physics can't explain i played a video before of this but what i'm saying is that it's certain vibrational tones and magnetic frequencies that may just make all of your organs just bust open you know if you think of sitting in front of a, a sitting in somebody's car with a bass drum on or you got to start thinking cymatic shit fucking you up in in non-pleasant ways when you're traveling out in these toronto areas and that's another way to say as this little girl born with the goggles on saying let me travel out here to the ice wall in the simulation speed ain't the same as in the living room so in the simulation she might be just running at 10 miles per hour where in the real life world that's and then when she get to the wall boom she really bumps into the wall and guess what happens she knock her glasses off her face that's to say that the wind at the edge of our earth will kill you these barriers at the end of our earth got to end your simulation. Just like Jim Carrey. He literally went and died. He went into the tomb, but to be born again on the other side. Because this is where the opening in the dome to get him outside the dome. You see what I'm saying? So this was like death and rebirth, which is, again, what Hiram Abiff ritual is all about. So... Um, earlier I was talking about the science behind this system. Let's go back to it. Because we was talking about the ring magnets stacked on each other. And basically these netters, each one of them got their own uh, different size energy field. Just like your spine, every last one of your spinal discs ain't the exact same size and just like the space in between think of matter of fact let me just pull up a spinal cord because i don't want to keep mentioning that and and because i really want to that's what i'm saying right here barber pole because check it out you think now this spinal cord system and it said God is seated at the top of this spinal cord. Remember, I gave you your Reuben cosmology. Look, all your Reuben cosmology is doing is saying, it, see, they talking about animals, plants, human community. Now, look, your ancestors is right above here. When we say our ancestors is looking down on us, it's because think about what the Yoruban people saying. Your Reuben people say our universal plane is right here. And remember, this became what? Aladdin's magic carpet. Them putting Aladdin on this. See, they got a movie with this shit. It's called a platform. I keep telling y'all that if you go watch the movie, the platform, right? It'll show you this whole Babel Tower system with the gods at the top just like i keep telling you hollywood ain't original it's ripping off your ancestors think about it black folks like to talk about we need to get in tune with our ancestors and they go pull up some damn shit from mainstream science and the straight up opposite of their ancestors. they go kick it with the people laughing at their ancestors and then 
they wonder why other people are empowered and know a lot of secrets with technology, the way things work, and we don't. Because you trying to learn from your enemy and he ain't going to give you the damn truth. He going to keep you at a certain level where you ain't never on his level. And the secret that he hide for you is what I'm showing you, the secrets of the universe, man. Because if you look at this Yoruban Cosmo, like, it's so known in the world about uh, certain groups of people that they, like I said, I can go all around and show you Hollywood have been plagiarizing these concepts and everything, but the Yoruban people ain't getting none of that money. You see what I'm saying? Uh, people on magic carpets, that's what this is. People on a carpet because look at the people, they was riding the table up to the top. And they turned that into uh, Aladdin, you know, on the magic carpet and shit. But this is, this is one cover of what I'm saying from the movie. But um, Yorubans were spot on. It say the humans were right here on this level. And above that, that's like your grandmother, people that passed away, the elders and stuff. And then above them, they elders, what they call divinities, the great, great grump, the great ones and all that. Because guess what? This is like a, a school system to where the upper grades know more than you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the universe is literally a university where we're learning what we are as spiritual beings through these incarnations. And then we all going to reach the supreme being state and become what's called an Ola Duma. That's not a God. That's to say that it's a position we all rise to. And here it is in the Hindu uh, universe. Plato called it the platonic realm in his, but it's called the uppermost realm of Brahma, Loka. So maybe I'm wrong when I say this thing go forever. Maybe we cap our shit off, end it, and goddamn it, become gods, and that happily ever after. And we just in this perfect state forever and ever. No more life and death. Because that's what the Hindus say. You're going to escape the, the, the whole. Let me read it to you. It say, in ancient Hindu cosmology, what we know as the earth is only one of countless worlds located in Brahmanda, which is itself only one of the um, uncountable universes. The known world was located in the middle of Buloka, right here, Jambu Buvita, where we at now. And it was comprised of many ring-shaped landmasses separated by oceans of various composition. From its center rose Mount Maru reaching into the heavens with, with the cycle of reincarnation. Well, it said, from its center rose Mount Maru reaching into the heavens. With the cycle of reincarnation, it was possible to reach other upper or lower realms. I want to stop and pay attention to that. You're reading it with your own eyes. With the cycle of reincarnation, it was possible. It don't say with rockets, with breaking through the ice wall or nothing. You know why? Because it's a simulation. And you got to take the veil off in order to make it out. You can't travel out of. Think about it. If I put you on some virtual reality goggles and now you in a video game. It don't matter where you go in the game, you will never make it out traveling inside the game. You won't make it out the game till you realize, first, you in a game and you need to take the damn goggles off your eyes like what Michael Jackson's showing you on his escape cover. Escape. Mm. He spelled it with an X because X marks the spot. Check this out, man. The Masons, when they talk about Jesus is here to wash away your sins, he was here to wash away your avatars. Let me show you some people. If you take the word erase and put it on a paper, that's just another way of saying auras. The auras. These are those things which will fade away like veils unveiling what's really beneath them. They're going to be erased, erased. 
if you take the P off of perish, what you get errors, you get this. So my thing is erase is auras is this thing. So to where Jesus said, I'm going to wash away your sins. S Y N T H S. Them your auras, your sin, your S Y N S. Sins. Sins. These, this avatar is, is synth-based technology, meaning that like a, if you understand what a MIDI board is, um, it's a keyboard that can mimic many things. But uh, the piano really come, has its own unique sound, a piano. But there are certain pianos that can sound like a drum. They can sound like a violin, and that's called synth technology. It allows the piano to play a role, many roles, and that's what the many auras are, God playing many roles. A piano acting like a violin here, it's acting like, but it ain't going to sound good until it play itself like a piano because the way you play a piano ain't the same way you play a violin or a flute. So if I play a flute with a piano, it ain't gonna sound like a dude that literally played the flute because the way that a piano is made for piano tones and not flute, like, you know, me playing a drum pattern on a keyboard versus a real drum set machine. You know, is limitations with that and you ain't gonna get the organic sound on the synth board which is what the body is. So you're a piano that wanted to be a drum set at first. Then you decided to be a violin. Then you decided to be a damn bagpipe. And you decided ultimately, let me be a piano. And boy, you sounded the best. When, when, that's what I'm saying. Like The instrument was designed to sound like a piano. It can play other instruments, but it can, can't mimic them better than them instruments. And, it, and them instruments can't sound like a piano better than that piano can sound like itself, if that make any sense. Using musician terminology here. The musicians is like, hell yeah, we feeling that, nigga. But yeah, with these floating rings is mean it ain't levitation. And see, this right here literally fucks gravity all up, son. Let me tell you, this rock bottoms the shit out of gravity, son. This choke slams the fuck out of gravity. This right here, DDP's gravity so damn hard that science got devices out calling this shit anti-gravity. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, ain't that the shit that y'all calling buoyancy in the ocean? How the fuck y'all got all of these synonyms for the upward force? And how we just can't acknowledge that things are settling laws of based on laws of density and magnetism. Because these ring magnets really, really stone cold Steve Austin stunned the hell out of gravity. Real talk. Um, check this out though. Because gravity should be pulling all these down into a psh, like no space in between them. And gravity allowing not only for them to have space in between them, but letting them to distinguish on their own how much space they want. And gravity ain't saying nothing about it. Gravity ain't going to do nothing about it. Like, come on. <laughs> you, you don't understand how this really beats up. Gra in fact, my next gravity debate, I got to do the ring magnet with them like, But again, it ain't levitation. It ain't anti-gravity. It's just magnetism. It's just that magnetic energy, we can't see it, but it's physical, though. It's physical. Like I showed earlier, dealing with wind, the way wind is. But let me, let me just now 
what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to, I wanted to touch on this Petri joint some more because they talking about Pangea, but if Pangea formed the globe, the shit should be called Bogea. Now, I said we all know the difference between a pan and a damn bowl if you in my kitchen. You see what I'm saying? So, if you understand, flat earth is based upon a Petri dish and life as a serum dropping from the sin. Let me show you something. Now, I'm going to show y'all why I don't really got no more hope for the world. It breaks my heart. Let me show you this crazy shit. Watch this. This is what science give us, right? They give us images like this. And they say, when you ask them how life started, they say, well, look. There was this big rock that came from outer space. And that rock had the human seed on it. It had the germ of human life on this rock. And this rock landed in Earth ocean and turned into a single cell organism. And then it, expand, it, it evolved into, like I said, monkeys, fishes, you know the whole, it, from fishes to monkeys, etc. Think about that, y'all. An uh, inanimate object giving us consciousness, intelligent beings from a rock. Go outside and look at a rock on the ground and say, this is what create humans. Stupid. This rock got the ocean pregnant with my great 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 you get the goddamn point granddad and grandmother and guess what they wasn't in a human form they were single-cell organisms, and then they turned the mermaids, chimps, Neanderthals. People, this is motherfucking horse shit, son. I feel stupid repeating it. Let's stop it right now. So check this out. This is, so a person will believe this right here, right? But they won't believe, watch this now, they won't believe this. Which one make most sense? that we're in a controlled environment with barriers to it. We call it the ice wall. We are humans started at the center of the earth and then we made it, made it, made it and we left Eden like the Bible say, like all the religions say. We, we, the humans started at the middle of the earth where all of the compasses are pointing to on earth. Let me tell you something. When I, when I, at, when somebody asks me where did human life start at, I can say, pull out a compass. It's going to do the, it'll point to the, I ain't got to do no pointing. Instruments are point for me. I can put my hands in my pocket. That's how bad I am. Now you can't do that. People say life come from the sun. Show me a compass pointing at the sun. Why does this make sense? The foundation of all life is based on electromagnetism and the most of it is at the North Pole. If the most of it was at the sun or moon, your compass would be tracking the goddamn sun. People knew they way around the earth based upon the compasses pointing toward the center and they navigated by that. And the word guide became the word God now and saying, I know the way you, you won't get lost if you follow me. Ain't that's what God saying? No, that's what God said. This is what the compass pointed us in the right direction. So where is it point us to the center? What's at the center of our earth, y'all? The seed of creation, the tree of life. Why can't you go there? Because your eyes will see something that will debunk every lie you've been told in this simulation. You will see the computer that's literally generating this damn virtual reality around us. On some real matrix shit. You will see the technology that's responsible 
for this entire expanding universe. It'll be like a germ going back to the middle of a Petri dish. Now think about this Petri dish that I'm showing. There was no life in it. Life dropped into this thing, and that's why they call us fallen angels. Why are humans called fallen angels? The sperm is literally a serum. The penis is a syringe. It's delivering the germ of life into a Petri dish called a fetal bag. And then that thing expands into a human body just like a seed becoming a tree around a central point. So this is Pangea right here. And the word Gia is the word Gaia. Gaia. Why? Because this whole Petri dish that I'm showing you is why they call it the great whore. She has a spiky crown on. Let me show you something. This is the black hole they worship. Let me show you. I ain't making this up. This Petri dish is what do we call a woman that's a great whore? You ever heard of be called a... Drop a one in the chat room if you from the old school. They'll say, man, yeah, she's a damn Petri dish, <laughs> you know, because a Petri dish got all the germs. And any germ you can think of is in that fungus growing in there. And it's expanding from the center of the dish. So that literally is another way of saying a great whore. She's a Petri dish. All life on earth has come inside of her, meaning entered the earth realm. And when you look at that from this perspective, she, she manifested as a goddess with serpent head. Matter of fact, I'll show it to you. You know Medusa with all of the fucking snakes on her head? That's the Statue of Liberty, the Queen of Babylon. You see what I'm saying? But this is representing, uh, again, this same concept. Magnetism, the black hole where life is being recreated and all that. But again, now we talk about life coming from a doggone comet. And they really telling you a discharge from your daddy. All of this space science is a religion based on sex magic, to hide. See, they would tell these stories to children because they didn't want to be graphic. But now adults is being told children's stories. If when you ask where life come from, each one of us created our own universe and we connected all of our universes to make the universe, which is like I told you, internet gaming. You know, I can play my Call of Duty with many people online, but all of us got our own Call of Duty in our own house. Each human is creating their own virtual reality around them, and like the ancestors had a word for it, they said all is connected. That meant that each one of our universes will become a universe to where we have a shared experience that we call life outside. You dying is literally you taking your universe away. And that's the Vamana ship floating off into the sky. When the Hindus showed a dead loved one leaving Earth, they showed them floating away in their own little bubble and like Earth realm around them. So when you travel from out of your body back to the North Pole upon death, it won't be, it, it'll be According to the Hindu, you will be inside of this another like simulation that you're running out. Like you may um, create your bedroom and you land in your bed and shit. And you may say, I want to go to my grandma house. You don't go to your grandma house. You just ponder it. You're, you're in this little like starship and based on magnetism, the North Pole is pulling you back to the central point where it all started. But on your journey back, it's like you will be in this sort of inner, inner astral realm. If you ever been on an astral plane, it's a form of the simulation where you kind of controlling it with power, like a lucid dream state. 
And I'm telling you, I can go deep on that too, but I ain't going to really go too deep into that. I just wanted to talk about the Petri dish concept and how that relates to the great whore. Gaia, Pan Gaia, Pan and Gaia together like Adam. When they talk about Adam and Eve leaving the center and Adam and Eve seeding life all on earth, Adam is Pan and Eve is Gaia. And you put them together, you get Pan Gaia or Pangea, which is this whole Petri dish concept of, of life as a germ come expanding from a center point. And it also speaks about how as it expanded, it transformed, meaning Adam and Eve didn't have a lot of flaws that we had. Once we left the center, now we got pain, we got certain things, and it get worse and worse as you go out. But if you look at this uh, Petri this, it's creating the flat earth ring map, if you pay attention to it. It's literally creating the ring map. And this can go on and on forever. Depend depending on how big your Petri dish is, this fungus will just keep going and going. Nothing will stop it. And, and what will happen is it will create more and more rings with the dimmer rings being at the edge and the more brighter, darker colored rings at the middle. So that's like a light shining and the light getting dimmer and dimmer as it expands. Think of me shining a flashlight and light projects in a triangle form. And that's like a cone. That's the Babel Tower. And, but the thing is this, just like that flashlight, what caps this tower of light? It's the machine itself, the actually all seeing eye or the lens of the flashlight. So if this fungus was, let me show you something real quick. Because I got a good point to make with this real quick. Uh, it just dawned on me to open this up too. Yeah, give me one minute. Did, uh, yeah, it's going to be worth waiting. Check this out, right? Here go what the chakras are. Now, what we see on the left, again, that's like them ring magnets. That's called acoustic levitation. That's a real science. Now, levitation itself is some pseudo stuff. But acoustic levitation, we can do that all day. We can take frequencies and make things levitate based on what a levitation is what's throwing it off. Levitation is a pseudo word because these things are not really levitating. They're sitting on invisible pillars. And these are called the pillars of creation or the foundations of these invisible spaces in between the little uh, uh, water driplets those are water driplets so think of those water driplets on the left that's like your chakras on the right and what that is is like i said if creation is being dropped from above fallen angels out of like a syringe in the middle of a petri dish it'll be in drips and each one will contribute to the ring system that we're calling Earth or what the Hindu call Jam Jamdu Vipa. And I can show you that what the Hindu call the Earth is this Petri dish. Look, the known world is literally life expanding from Mount Maru. And if you look at what's happening at Mount Maru, let's go to the Hebrew cosmos. Here go the syringe that I'm talking about. It's called God. That's the father. Why do you think they call God the father? Because it's literally your daddy, man. Your creator is your daddy. You came out of his two balls. And that's talking the light of the sun and moon. That's the shaft and the phallus. See, that's why I keep telling you sex magic. 
every they didn't want to talk so graphic when they told this so they started giving you like birds and bees and little store and we started taking the stories literally but the secrets of life each one of us come from a big bang which is the mom and daddy's you know daddy's discharge this god of the heavens is the father your daddy and life comes enters the womb boom and then it you know boom drops here all of us comes from the north pole and we expand outward onto the earth and what this science is showing us is the creation of the brain and what what let me show you what i mean by that what happens when we're created in this simulation let me show you see in your mama's fetal bag the discharge of the father creates a ripple effect and around that point of impact where the sperm hits the fetal bag is the neural network and the brain start to form around the pineal gland the body starts to form around I mean the torso start to form around the heart the brain the the, the brain start to form around the pineal gland and see, all of these organs are growing from invisible seeds, and this is how you manifest it in the womb. Each one of these chakras gave birth to a different organ up or, up or down the body. You see what I'm saying? Let me, let me give you another one that's going to, this will bring it together. You see here? This is how your body was formed. It was seven explosions. So when the father discharged the semen, it was seven versions of you. They told you only one made it, but they lied to you. All seven. And, and if you want to say, well, Brother Sanchez, how you know it was seven sperm that made it to the egg and not just a bunch of them like they tell us? But I'm actually going on. Let me show you what I'm going by. I can show you better than I can actually tell you. Hold on. This is why. So the father shot out seven copies of you. And each seven went into a, a different egg, a different universe. And the first one was last, and the last one going to be first. So put it this way, right? I, I just want you to hear this out because I hope I'm not losing you. The Bible said the same thing. The Bible said the first shall be last, the last shall be first. Now watch this, though. I'm going to show you sperm journeying. To the earth and to show you what I mean here. And I'm going to show you magnet energy. This is a magnet in the bottom right. And that's metal shards. Look at the pattern that magnetism make. You know why I want to show you that? Because all of us know we see the Santa Claus hat. The cone with the dot on it. That's the, and my thing is that's the star at the top of the Christmas tree. I flipped it upside down on this one to make a point, though, to show you the Big Bang Theory and all that. With the, when they give you the rock landing to create life, let's go back to that because this is my Petri example. You know, this is what they give you, though. I think I'm making more sense than them with just an inanimate object creating this intelligent life. So they give you a rock, boom, I'm giving you seven rocks. And I'm telling you, each one of them is the seven chakras. And, and each one of those seven are like the seven-headed beast, Leviathan, and the seven deadly sins. Because each one of them is governing with an organ that you got to overcome. You got to have control over your sex drive, your appetite, what you say out your mouth, and your thoughts and everything up this Babel Tower if you want to make it out.
You got to master these systems of the body. This is what I'm saying, mind over matter. So when you look at how you manifested in the womb of your mama, these seven iterative vortexes, vortexes form in the fetal bag. And simultaneously at the same time, they, they, this is your, basically the sperm cell is your damn spinal cord. Let me pull this up for you so you can see how simple this shit is. Watch this. Watch this real quick. I, I, I'm a little unorganized here. You know, when you think of a sperm cell, you probably never think of this here. The brain and the spinal cord. All that, listen, the sperm cells are nothing but brains and spinal cords at a young stage or central nervous systems. If you look at a sperm cell, it looks just like this central nervous system on the right. Now, it's seven of these sperm cells that were discharged by the father. And so that seven central nervous system, seven brains, seven spinal cords, or seven kashas, seven chakras, you see this, the many bodies, each one of them got their own brain and spinal cord that's growing the branches, which is the arms and legs around it. But this is the seed right here. This is the seed. This is what the sperm evolved to, a brain and a spinal cord. And it, all of the wiring of the body is connected to that original sperm. All he did was expand, he mutated into this right here, and formed a body around it. And so uh, seven of those in seven different universes giving birth to seven endocrine systems and to me when i look at the word in the cream it's like in the crying because babylon the place of hell in the flesh in the crying like all of the struggle in we re when we get to heaven is no more pain and suffering and all that is based upon this system you know what i'm saying so the solar system, as they call it. So our whole body is a tree that's growing like a, your, your spinal and brain is like the trunk of a tree. And the branches is your arms, uh, legs, and rib cages, and all the shit growing around this little stem stalk here. But that was implanted in creation as the sperm is what I'm saying. You know, and so when we take a look at this here, this is what they saying about this rock that landed into the waters to see life, but they turned it into this lie that everybody believed when you ask them how life was started and they don't really connect it back to you. They go to talking about, and let me close some of this out. Just to make this thing more organized. Yeah, man. So the sperm, when I said a first shall be last, last shall be first, right? If you think about it, right? Each sperm that land inside of this circle is going to make their own ripple, their own ring when they impact. And each sperm inside of its own ring, when it impacts, it separates you into these ethers right here. Take some of your other copies and put them in their own worlds because they impacted. This impact, this ring that we what that the sperm make when it impact is literally the world around the body right here, you see? Which is each sperm impacted at its own time, created its own ring, and that's how you get seven versions of yourself in seven netters. And the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Why? Because the first sperm that um, impacted going to be the, uh, think about it, it's going to be born out of the, the system last. 
and the and the last sperm gonna be born out first. You get it? The Bible is telling us the secrets of the simulation based upon how consciousness landed as a fallen angel. Think about it. When your daddy discharged you, some of the, your cop is landed in these higher heavens and you got to rise your consciousness back to them versions of you through to be born again in them versions. So you got these versions of yourself that exist already in these greater kingdoms where you living out this grand reality right it's waiting on you to partake in it and you may say let me hurry up and get there because i'm gonna miss it guess what the higher up we go the slower time is dude so don't rush don't trip <laughs> because when we finally get to the highest point only 10 seconds pass but that was a couple of lifetimes crazy ain't it the higher up we go, time moves slower. Go look that up. Now watch this, right? Here's what's crazy. Your father discharged seven versions of you. One of them landed right here in the world as right beneath heaven. One of them landed in this world as two worlds beneath heaven. Then three were, and each sperm landed in its own world. And the sperm that, that, that was the first one to land it landed in the very, very lowest world. This little fast swimmer right here, he's the one that landed in the very worst world. And this is to say that the sperm that's the greatest and the quickest, well, we're going to put the worst on him. And the sperm that ain't that fast will put him in the easy worlds. So the universe is practicing balance, y'all. This shit is really dope when you think about it. The, the, your, the version of you that's in this world right now is literally your greatest version. That's why they chose you to be in this shit. And your consciousness had to start in this greatest version. But your greatest version was born in the worst world based upon the laws of the universe. Your worstest version or your, your you know, the versions of yourself where you ain't all of those copies up there are in these higher heavens. Those are like angels that never been to the world before. And the reason that they been good is because they just programmed to be up there being good. Your consciousness ain't even in them. It's on autopilot till you rise up to these versions. But the thing is that autopilot They're simulate. It's like when you dream, you go into these other versions of yourself and you play out these other roles of yourself, these whole other personas of yourself. And you don't you automatically assume the role because that version of you already living out. It's still there now in that world. And you can dream back into it and revisit that body, that world. You could be living multiple realities at one once you get the hang of this. Because each of these sperms is you that landed in a, its own netta. So when these sperms were discharged, some already, the ones that, let me tell you something. The, the sperm cells that landed in these higher realms, the crazy thing about it, they landed there last. But the sperm that landed right here in the earth realm, he was the first one to make impact. Look at this shit. This fast swimmer, because he's swimming so fast, he made the greatest impact, uh, uh, which created the, the, this earth realm with the most density, what we call weight. Think of a trampoline. The man that, that bounces the presses down the heart is at the middle of a trampoline. Everybody else on that trampoline going to be sucked into his vortex. That's what happened to your other copies based upon your greatest copy landed in the lowest world first. That's why I'm showing you how this universe shaped like a, a, a cone upside down like Dante's Inferno. It gets slimmer because the thing is this, right? 
the deepest world that exists in the deepest underworld is the smallest circle, just like a trampoline. Like the more the, cir the when you press down in the middle of a trampoline, the more you go toward the center, it get deeper, but it also get tighter. Ain't a lot of room. It starts slimming down to a point. That's what I'm showing you. So the thing is, when the Bible say the first shall be last and the last shall be first, this first sperm cell is actually going to make it out of the simulation last because it got to climb up through more levels. Versus these sperms that actually made, they impact slower and later, but they going to be first to make it out because they ain't got that many levels to climb out of. That's why the Bible said the first going to be last and last shall be first because more is expected from your greatest uh, uh, version. Your greatest version had to descend to the lowest point. Why? Because that's what make it great. It can go lower than the rest of them. Think of scuba diving. The greatest scuba diver can die the deepest. And that's what their first sperm represent. The version of you, because it can go that deep, it can go the highest too. So it take that one longer to make it course, but it can travel to areas that the other ones can't go. In fact, it's the only one that can be there. And that's the one because it travels alone. Why there are many other copies of that one, they can't do what it do, which is make the greatest impact. And that's you being yourself. When, Cause there's only one you. Can't nobody be you but you. So that's what this whole thing represent. And it's like the man that make the biggest dent in a trampoline, he's gonna go up the highest when that shit releases. The man that bent his knees the lowest will jump the highest. That's the secrets of what I'm showing you. If I give 10 people bow and arrows, the man that's pulling his shit back the longest, he gonna be taking all day. They are gonna be like, damn, are you gonna let the arrow go already, man? How strong you want it to be, right? Everybody else gonna been a been released they arrows, but they shit ain't gonna go that far though. So he taking long and he putting more effort, but he's gonna go to places everybody else can't go. That's the secret to this whole universe. What I'm giving you: the first shall be last, the last shall be first. He was the first one to experience hell, and he gonna be the last one to experience heaven. Now these sperms up here, they was the first ones to, they was the, you know, you can flip that backwards. I'm confusing my damn self. You know what I'm saying? Because this sperm was the first to land in the depths of hell. And, and because of that, it's going to be last to make it back to heaven. You know, the first shall be last. And then the ones that landed last, they didn't make it too far down. They stopped their journey in these higher realms up here. And these are the stars that we send in the sky are our other versions. Even Plato spoke about this right here. It's, so, so this is how we became split into multiple versions. And uh, this is called a multiverse. And how you would travel in the multiverse is you would project your consciousness to different avatars that exist in different simulations. They even saying that today. So first shall be last, last shall be first. You now know the riddle of why that's written in the Bible. If you, if you want to support my research, uh, I pin my cash app to the top of the chat room. You can also check the video description and check out the many products. You can check us out and, and purchase some if you have it that support us too. And we appreciate you guys. Um, like I said about the stars, every star in the sky is being projected from Polaris, just like this water fountain. So if you think of the stars like these drips of water, 
each of these drips of water. And it's more drips the lower we go. It's more drips, man. But each of those drips were created from one little drip at the top. And that's what I'm saying about the sperm concept. They're not really telling us the secrets of life. I'm giving it to you. Check this out. This sperm at the top is Polaris. That's the base reality. That's your true self. You still a baby there. But down here, you a grown man aging and shit. You see what I'm saying? Once your consciousness make it up there to the base reality, you gonna just be born. You just a sperm making it up there into your mama's womb. This the journey we in. It's a continuum. So, each of these versions of ourselves is like a drip of water trickling down from the top. And that's the journey from Eden. And the lower we go, the more versions of ourself exist, which is not the key. Because it's like, excuse me, it's like being in a mirror house. And the word mirror is the word maru, which is this mountain of light that they saying is at the middle of our earth. And I'm showing you this is nothing but our spinal cord lean to the brain and the way out. Because it's an out of body is out of earth. This ball at the top, that's literally the light in the middle of your pineal gland right here. And once you make it, once you go inside of that, they going to say the sperm, that, that's what they saying is a sperm hitting the egg. You see what I'm saying? And that's how you, so the, the crazy thing is that when people say I'm dying and I see a white light, when you go into that light, you really become a sperm going into an egg into your next higher uh, uh, reality. And so when you thinking that you are a ghost going into the light, but in your next reality, the doctor saying that's a sperm going into an egg. This whole process is called spaghettification. Check it out. You see that? This the secrets of life. They don't want you to know this. And my thing is, this is dope to know. Why would you hide this from the people? So check this out, right? You can see this light being sucked into a black hole, and that's how you got here. Everything that enters a black hole, once it crosses the event horizon, is never the same. That's the law of the black hole. At the event horizon, transformation must take place. So what that looked like to you was a sperm becoming a human through that portal called an egg. But it ain't really an egg. It's the edge of a black hole. It's an event horizon. It's literally like a manhole leaving out this bitch. You this is why I keep showing you Michael Jackson. If you're underground in a sewer and you were born underground, let me show you some shit. If you were born underground, you never been to the top. You don't even know it's a world up there. You just hear sounds. You call it thunder and lightning. But you don't know that's cars and a whole nother reality. You say, man, I hear thunder and lightning every day at, at this time. That's rush hour in a world above you. You are translating all this as natural weather because you never been out of this sewer. And all you know is this sewer. And then one day, guess what? You see a fucking light open up. And this sewer is your body. It's your body. And when we open up the covering, that's the mind. And then you get out of your body and you go to the other side, right? Into a whole, you peeking it, you like, damn, what? And what you're doing, you're, you're actually emerging into another layer of yourself. Your consciousness is going into a higher layer of yourself out of one body into another one. And your consciousness is like this infinite light 
but it's trapped in this little bitty body in the middle right here. So once it expands and fill up this entire body, there's nowhere for it to go but up. It's like, if I'm filling up, think about this, right? If I'm filling up a, uh, 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 you know, think about this. If I'm filling up a balloon with water, and once the water fills up the entire balloon to where it can't go no more, the water just going to start bursting out the top of the balloon. So now your, your consciousness is light expanding. And the reason it's expanding is because it's filling up the layers. Now think about this. Think if I give you a dry towel and I take a syringe, put it on the towel, and just insert water. And that towel becomes drenched in water, and I say, give me a bigger dry towel. Let's cover it up. It bought us some time. Now we dry again. But eventually, the water going to expand and absorb through that one. Guess what? Give me another towel. But the ball getting bigger and bigger now. This is the chakra system saturation from the inside out expanding light and once you fill up one of the rags the water pour over into the next one and pour into the next one and see when this water ain't got nowhere to go and i'm talking about the light of not knowledge is power it's gonna activate you know let me show you some at a carnival they hit this little thing and the harder you hit it that little thing go up and ring a bell at the carnivals and stuff. That's your chakra system. The heart, that's what I was saying about the trampoline. The man that pressed down the lowest going to jump the highest. The man that take that hammer and hit that little machine the hardest, the little thing going to go up the highest and ring the bell. What is that thing called? I can't think of it, but that's based upon consciousness arising up the spinal cord and the kundalini rising up. So that's why this is called Saturn, because it's based upon the saturation of light filling all the layers of the self. Now, you may give me seven different towels to catch that water, but the truth is that when the water make it to each towel, they all going to be the same, which is wet. <laughs> so the water becomes the thing that unites them all. It becomes this medium that connects them into one now. It merges them into one big glob of saturated towels. And, and the thing is that um, that's what this unity is about because water is a conduit for electricity. So for all of your layers to become one and sync together, this knowledge or this water per se have to span through all of them. And we know what happens if you throw electricity in the swimming pool. The, the water will allow the electricity to make it to all the areas of the pool. You see what I'm saying? And no matter where you at in that pool, you're going to get shocked because water will transmit this signal and it it is be like a medium. So that's what this light is. It light is a medium by which knowledge, intelligence, consciousness, smartness, how to move. That is just transmitting data. And that data is it what is it? It's the knowledge of how to be God. And the more of it it can transmit, the more godlike you become. It's a process. So that's like saturation. Gradually, each towel will be drenched in its own time. And to say that each of these versions of yourself that's void of any light, eventually your consciousness will expand and fill up all of these versions. And once all of them is filled with the one light, you will be this seven-headed Leviathan, this sort of, like I told you, you will be at this, this God-like state, this son of Bonham, to where you can consciously tap into all of your previous lifetimes in one time. That's a God-like state.
where you now remember all of your cycles of life and death. All of that experience and data through all of incarnation is going to make you a God at, at the climax of this. So all of this is for a reason. The reason it's tough and it hurts and it's painful is the same reason of you bending down on a trampoline. If I'm pulling back that bow and arrow, it's tough. It take a lot of strength. My arm tied, but I, I, I'm going to be rewarded because my arrow going to go farther. So this simulation is meant to be tough. Tension. It's a tent creating tension. That's going to create you the energy and you to want to detach from it like a rocket saying, okay, I'm taking off. It don't want you to be comfortable because it ain't your true home. So the more uh, scary it can be, the more war, the more famine, because we we know this ain't the base reality. So anything that can lead to an out-of-body experience, no one cares as long as you get out. That can be famine. That can be genocide because we're in a damn game. It don't matter how you die in the game as long as you get out in that sense. So that's kind of like where people was like asking me earlier. So we never going to win. What is winning? What, what I'm telling you is this right here, right? Um, if the simulation is based upon you knowing you in a simulation, you won once you awaken to that knowledge. That's what Neo was showing us in the matrix. Think of how many times like you must have incarnated here without the knowledge and just came back like a CD on repeat. It's this knowledge that opened up the gateways to allow us to move beyond this simulation, just like in school. It's your knowledge of that classroom, what you learned in that class that's going to allow you to go to the next one. You got to master the class, the earth, the universe around you. The uni and then there's, there's height levels. The Yoruban cosmology shows us this. So when you go inside of a corporate building, the lower paying jobs is at the bottom and the highest paying jobs is at the top. Um, that's kind of the structure that they got to where the boss man is way at the top. You know what I'm saying? And they say where well, the power comes from the top down. And that's this whole Babel type system of our chakra layers and all that. And again, this water fountain concept I'm giving you as well. So you will have, you will go to floor 150 way at the top clouds outside the goddamn window. And way at the top of this big ass building, this one dude got a whole flow by himself. And only thing up there is the boss office. And he swing around in his throne in one little motherfucking chair. And this one guy runs the whole building. That's basically what Plato is showing us here. And he start to give power to executives and shit below him. They give it to the regular workers, and by the time you get to the lower floors, it's more people, but they making less money. And the higher up you go, it's less people making more money. All the way up to at the top is one dude that's making a fucking fortune. In fact, he's making so much money, he's outside of the na na uh, uh, normal economic uh, structure. He is this outside of law and order. He's above all sort of a God. And that's what this, if you want to compare, I'm trying to compare this universe system to a lot of structures on earth that model themselves afterward. If you know what I'm doing, here's a method to my madness. That throne of God is the dude at the top, though. That's the boss. Ho ho hold on a second, though, real quick, if you will. Peace and love, loyal viewers. You've been with us on this exciting journey, enjoying our content and being part of our community. But we need your support to keep the research going and to keep the platform alive. By contributing through Cash App, PayPal, or Patreon, you ensure that we can continue delivering the quality content you love. Your support fuels our passion and enables us to bring you even more exciting experiences. Thank you in advance for your gracious contributions. 
Yeah, appreciate y'all a lot, man. But like I was saying, if you go research spaghettification, that's literally what the uh, sperm enter in the egg. The egg is a damn gateway where transformation take place. When a sperm enters that egg, it don't leave out a sperm. It leaves out a human. And just like when w the uh, life that's inside of a seed pod, it don't leave out the seed pod. A seed, it leaves out a tree. Once the energy enters the pod, it never exits the same. This is the laws of black hole. This is the laws of an event horizon. Once you cross over, transformation take place. So if you look up sp spaghettification, a spaghettified astronaut literally looks like a sperm entering an egg <laughs> with his white helmet on, his tethering line, as he gets spaghettified into the black hole. And no astronaut has ever been spaghettified, so you would ask yourself, how do the NASA know all this? Again, it's called sex magic. This was what, Crow this was what Crowleyism was based on. This is what original Satanism was based upon, and it's not no devil worship. Like I said, a word evil just mean live when you flip it backwards. This is the knowledge of life. Satan is the serpent on a tree that told Adam and Eve, I'm going to give you the knowledge of God if you fuck with me. God don't want you to be like him. Really, if you really read the Bible for what it is, Satan the one helping your ass. God the one is hiding the knowledge from you, treating you like a child as saying they don't need to know about this because they going to fuck up. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you Satan saying God fucks up too. When God get mad, he got a wrath and he kill people. So why shouldn't you have the power to exercise hate and love? So this Sean Plato said our original template as humans is the form of good. When we say babies are born innocent, we're basically saying platonic. When we say everybody coming to this world innocent as a baby, that's a platonic statement. That's based upon a lot of laws of Plato. That's why we say that, but we don't know why we say that. Plato said our original form is the form of the good. And that's to say everybody come to the earth innocent. You ain't done nothing wrong as a damn baby, right? And then we evolve to learn evil based upon society teaches us evil based upon we being exposed to evil and whatever the mind is exposed to, it learns that thing whether it chooses to exercise it or not. The very exposure makes it now a reality and a knowledge and something that exists and that you, if you never saw evil before, it won't even be a reality to you. But you literally manifested here to witness the world of sin. And, and, and this experience would now make you exercise good and bad consciously versus think about this, right? Let's use the Bible, for example, again. The Bible talk about before, uh, where well, the Bible talks about angels that exist in heaven and they do good all the time because they don't know how to do bad. They never been to the earth. They are angel in heaven. Uh, they can't do bad because they don't know how to do bad. That's like a newborn baby just coming out the womb. How can it do something bad already? So my thing is like the angel is doing good, but not because it's want to do good because that's just the only thing it know. So when you make a decision to consciously do good, it's because you know what doing bad is. But how you know that? You've been exposed to it in this world. The choice of doing good or bad only exists in this world where duality exists. When you make it out of this world, 
the choice of doing good or bad won't exist because what the outside of this world is is what Plato was calling the form of the good. In other words, this is why they say evil don't exist in heaven and good don't exist in hell. These realms are separated by choices that individuals made in their lifetimes. Simple stuff. Very simple stuff. You can ascend or descend based upon truth or lies. The path to descension is the science community that's creating these false worlds around us. When people say, what matter? What does it matter the shape of the earth? If you understood that this is the knowledge that leads us out the simulation. If, if you born with virtual reality goggles on and you never saw the real world beyond them goggles and someone in the simulation says, what matter the, the shape of the earth? They trapping you in a fucking simulation because the moment you start saying about the shape of the earth, that's going to lead you to feeling your way out to the outer walls. What's out there? What's now you asking the questions that's going to make the gamer start feeling for reality beyond the game. So if you were born in my just this a crazy scenario, it will never happen, but I, I'm, I'm going to use an example. If you were born in a living room with virtual goggles on and you never took them off. And all you knew was the reality inside of those goggles. And somebody wanted to keep you with those blinders on as a slave in a living room. Right. Now, I'm going to give this scenario. Hear me out. In your virtual reality, every day you wake up and do a pointless job that don't seem to make sense to you. But every action that you making in the simulation translate to a real action in the real living room where you making me coffee and stuff. But in the simulation, it looked like you're just picking fruit. You making the motion in the simulation is look like you working a job stocking a shelf. But really, you organizing my dishes in my house with virtual reality goggles on. I got a false reality that's turning your false actions into real actions in the base reality for my pleasure. You think you doing something in the base reality that mean one thing, but in the spiritual realm, you working for me with these goggles on. Hear me out. If I wanted to keep you a slave in my house, it'll be my main goal would be to keep them goggles on your face and to keep running that simulation. Right. The moment you start asking questions about what's out there, the ice wall and what's at the North Pole, I'm going to say, hey, man, get you a job and go back to your job and stack them cabinets. Why? Because in the real world. That translates to seeing your job, you organizing Walmart shelves all day. But in a base reality, you organizing some king's cabin. And I'm just giving you a dumb scenario to show you how their, the interest is being harvested on the other side. So one reality is false, but the energy is real that's exerted. That's translated to somebody else. Now, the thing is, this is, though, like the moment you start asking questions that's got anything to do with about you going to your day to day life and, and get, getting your money and all that. We got to remind you, hey, man, get your money. Fuck all that ice wall shit and North Pole shit. You tripping, bro. Get And at the same moment you go to asking stuff like that, your boss might give you a promotion. He may say, look, man, we just found we want to promote you. You've been good now. Fuck that. You, you, back, you bought you some time. So it's like. You got these virtual reality goggles on. And they like the moment you start asking about what's out there, they know you about to take the goggles off. Because if they can keep you in this certain area in the living room, because what's going to happen if you go to talking about the ice wall, you're going to bump into the living room wall. 
And when that happened, boom, the goggles going to come off. I'm just giving a crazy scenario. Just to make a simple point of like how basically in a nutshell what's kind of happening. If you look at the movie The Matrix, everybody sleep on them towers. They was living their day-to-day lives, but they didn't know that the mind power that they was exerting in the matrix was literally being translated to computer power that the machines were using to power their own damn world. Go back and watch the matrix again, dude. It's deeper than you think if you didn't watch it with your third eye. Like, pay attention, dog. Real talk. It's crazy. So all this stuff is possible, and this is the kind of conversations that the science community need to be having if they are serious about uh, understanding the nature of reality. Now, I've been teaching you guys about this Petri dish concept. Let's look at bacteria in a Petri dish. So what happens is we have a Petri dish, right? And uh, it's a clear serum you know, like water in a fetus bag. But check me out, right? Um, we drop one bacteria in it. And over time, look what happens here. What can we learn from this? When we drop, the, the Bible calls it from one comes many. That's what the Bible said. The Bible have a concept from one comes many. This is the ripple effect of life, brothers and sisters. And this is exactly what I was just telling you about the uh, sperm, the, the, the one sperm. And as they expand from him around him, you get many copies the further it go, you see. And another way we looked at this was uh, with this particular collage. Let's go back to that one. So they drop one bacteria into the dish. That's the one. That's Neo. That's the one, right? That's this God that the Sumerians call Anu, which became the word Uno, which is another word, one. If you rearrange Uno, you get Nua, Neo, Noah, and all this stuff, which are the names of these gods that broke out of whales. They broke up out of a world. Uh, to represent us leaving the simulation. So uh, uh, another good movie was Ready Player One. I think I got to rewatch that one again. But um, yeah, you drop one bacteria, that original bacteria. Listen, the first bacteria that we see, that's the true self, the base reality. Everything that's copied from that one, these are the false uh, egos that the Hindus spoke of or the chakra layers that's growing around the true self. And uh, the more it expands, the more copies because the circles get small at, at, in the middle and wide at the edge. So, And remember that the more copies, that's what hell. When you look up hell in the ancient Hebrew, it, it meant repetition. The original definition of hell was repetition. So what is a repeat? It's a copy. So it's like hell to the ancestors was like a mirror house. It's like being trapped in a mirror house and not knowing which is the real copy, which is the real self. That was the original concept of hell. And the concept of you being burned was like a CD disc being copied. When I say I'm burning a CD disc. So people burn in hell. Repetition, this was the concept of scan and copy. And that's what's happening to our consciousness. And I don't know uh, if this is by natural. I don't think it's natural design. I think that this is the role of the simulation because it want to... Uh, uh, simulate each one of our spirits each one of think about what computers are doing they are taking human beings 
learning their behavior and their personalities and making their own AI copies of it. And let me show you something real quick. Um, this is a true story. The re you know that this, that was a real black dude that was cloned. The real they clone Tyrone. No cap. Let me let me let me watch this. I don't know if y'all ever saw this shit, but check this out. The paranormal chick here. This video has recently gone viral on Instagram and TikTok, and what it is is this unidentified man who goes by the handle name of Rampage has come forward with claims that his face was cloned for one of the robots seen at the Chargers game. He is stating that the robot that was sitting down as a fan in the game was used, that's his face. His face was used for that robot. Could it be true? Does he have a legitimate claim to this cloning theory? Watch this. It's damn near 1,000 people at a time. Every time I go live, it's almost 1,000 people watching this and they wanna know what's going on. I'm telling y'all, bro. I don't care if I got to go lie every day to expose these folk. They done got caught. Fuck, I give a fuck, man. I'm going to die anyway. I don't care about them folk catching me slipping, lacking. I'm up out of here. Get what? 1,000 people. Yo, this man was at a Chargers game and saw a fucking AI robot in the audience because you know at these football games, they got the rope. And let me tell you something, right? We keep on talking about Aliens gonna invade the earth. They got us looking for aliens and shit. Aliens are here, alien invasion. Listen, the words alien invasion is AI, but the real AI is artificial intelligence and they already silently invading us. When we start seeing robots at the fucking football game that look just like humans, look at this AI. Let me show y'all how crazy this shit is. Hold on. You got to see this shit yourself. Watch this. There has not been much news about the iRobots at the NFL game. Since Look at the skin and the eyes. And y'all telling me that it ain't no humans among us right now that's robots? Bro, I wouldn't be surprised if y'all done shook plenty robots' hand in your life. I wouldn't be surprised if the average human have interacted with some sort of AI robot several times in their life because if you look at the technology at this Chargers game, this fucking robot look just like a human. If you hide, if you hide his ears, if you hide this nigga ears, you can't tell me that ain't a human. If you hide the ears on this thing, bro, you I be I, I you you lying to me that ain't a human. You feel me? Watch this. Since they were revealed to part of a promotion for the upcoming sci-fi movie The Creator. However, some fans and media outlets have shared their reactions and opinions about the stunt, which ranged from a weaned curiosity to fear and skepticism. Here are some examples of what people have to say about those artificial intelligence robots at that NFL game. And look at how real they moving though. And I'm gonna tell you some. We need to be asking questions because these things ain't got real eyes. So, But think about this, right? You got to ask yourself, who's on the other side of this robot? Is there's a dude looking at everybody through cameras with the eyes is going to another? Because what I'm going to tell you like this, I think that these are human drones, meaning that it's a couple of rich people, right, that want to go to the game but they don't want to be in the crowd with everybody so they can sit in a castle and put on some sort of like VR goggles and sit in like a seat or something and they house some sort of VR suit and they can have a fucking AI robot at a Chargers game, but they can be in the UK somewhere in the castle and the robot will be moving on their behalf, which is how you get religion saying let my will be done through you it's technology that these religions are hiding and we bringing back the technology 
These are man drones. We ain't we we gotta stop calling them AIs. I wouldn't be surprised if these AIs are real people attending the game. One of them can be Queen Elizabeth, nigga, saying, I had fun at the Chargers game in my AI body. <laughs> nigga sitting next to an AI uh, bot and don't know that he's sitting next to goddamn some dude in Romania that just sacrificed a baby. Like, this the kind of shit we need to be thinking about. Who is controlling this robot? It ain't on auto. This is some kind of control mechanism. And I'm telling you that these, the, the invasion is here, man, because we don't know what's on the other side of the mind of this thing. And we looking for aliens and stuff, and this stuff is already here. Okay. I think it's a cool way to advertise a movie, but I Now, people say... Ain't no way that it can be humanoids among us walking among us. Bro, look how real this look. The skin, it got a little sweat film on it. How you gonna tell me that's a robot if you hide the ears on it? And I'm telling you, they can be all up. They could have been up. How do we go from robots that looked at bulky and crazy as hell 10 years ago to today they look just like a human? You can't even tell them apart. You think they just making big technological leaps like that? Bro, I'm 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 gonna be the one to say they been had this shit. I wouldn't be surprised if everybody in, in government is a goddamn AI bot and we ain't never saw the real people. The only thing, think about it, if you watch the movie The Truman Show, the only real person in it was Truman. Everybody else was a fake character that literally lived in a secret society on the other side of the dome. We may be in a world, y'all, where ain't nothing but a few thousand real conscious humans and the rest may be full of fucking bots. But that'll be crazy to think of that, huh? But I'm, I don't want to go that far because that ain't a good way to take this real talk that I don't think that's pretty healthy to go. You know, the folks to look around and think that. But I'm just saying, who knows? The possibilities are there. And, and there is a constructive way to have these conversations to unlock more truths. But this is fucking crazy because when they sit down and make these alternative consciousness these humanoids what are they basing them off of let's hear this man out because this ain't like this ain't funny for real bro to look up and see a machine with your fucking likeness with your entity when they say let us make man in our image see we go on these sites all day where we using the filter technology, the women want to put bunny rabbit ears on, dudes want to use all of this filter technology on your phone, and when you sign up to these things, you not reading the fine print. They might be telling you, we get to use your damn likeness for certain technology if you use our uh, beauty filter for your photo. So if you want to make a fake version of yourself, they going to literally make a fake version of yourself. Ain't that a bitch? Oh, my God. They saying, see, how you think they can legally clone this man into an AI bot and he can't sue or do nothing about it? I'm telling you, I think the answer is a lot of these sites we using, though, with the tech filtering tech and shit, we, sign, we don't see the fine print. They might be telling you, man, look, we can use your likeness and shit for technology and shit. If you read it, it might say something like that. H hold on, hold on, hold on for a second. I did it for y'all. If I'm a sacrifice, 
anything, bro, I'm sacrificing it right now. Letting you know right now. Hey, bro. On your way up out of here, just remember this is what they doing, bro. This is what's going on. I'm not scared. I'm not scared to die. Once you get a really understanding of what life is, This dude really seemed deep. I love to interview this cat. I'm gonna try to find him. Let's take a quick break, guys, and we'll be right back after these messages real quick. Yeah, man, so I don't want to really keep the stream going. I'm going to actually be putting in a lot of work this weekend, and I'm going to come back because all they're going to do is make me work even harder since they tried to shut me down. But like I was saying about this Petri dish example, like all of this stuff leads to flat earth multiverse. Check this out, right? Like, like this image here. Look at how all you got to do is study how fungus uh, expands in a Petri dish. All of these shapes is what we're caught. Like, look at this, right? We'll put microorganisms in a Petri dish, right? And, and these microorganisms will start to resemble real life organisms that we see in real life. So if you look at this, this look like a treat on it. Let me see if you put like a, let me see. Now that is a microorganisms under a Petri dish. But in our world on a larger scale, right? That can be manifesting as something like this right here. You see what I'm saying? So let's look at microorganisms under a Petri dish. The sacred geometry shapes of all life are the same. That's the fractal nature of reality. And we'll be talking about that some more uh, this weekend. 
uh, support the show. I will make time to come back and continue this. We ain't going to let you two win this battle. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here tonight, though. Um, but we got Friday, we got Saturday, we got Sunday, and I'm going to definitely arrange some more content for y'all to go deeper with these concepts. And I appreciate y'all for even being interested in this type of uh, loss ancestor knowledge, though. It ties in a lot of mysterious things about reality that we're trying to make sense out of. But I will be back. And, um, yeah, I think the word Petri is also, like, somehow related to patriarchy because this is dealing with the world that's created by the big head scientist, Yakub. But we're going to get into that and, and talk more about Pangea and the syringe being the father's phallus and all that stuff, too. Again, zero and one binary code, the five symbol. Support the show. I'm going to make time for... Uh, I know a lot of folks say, Sanchez, I don't really dig your open panels. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do solo presentations and end it. And then I'll do the open panel on an after show. And that'll uh, actually send traffic to my other channel. And we'll have the after shows already pre-scheduled. And we'll head over there right after the solo presentation and have the round table. It'll be two shows separated. And that way everybody win. So flat power to that simple solution and uh yeah man we're gonna get on up out of here peace and much